The title of this video is Socioeconomic Complexes of Interracial Marriages. The old title of a raised video was Why is both dangerous and stupid to marry where why? And I raised that because it really sounded negative and I wanted deliberately to make more balanced approach. So in this approach I'm gonna be analyzing three separate things but very connected. First one is the Confucius, Confucianism, Confucius and his uh, philosophy. However you pronounce Confucius in your language, you're gonna get it. And the uh, second thing is the successful marriages and the uh, third, third thing is unsuccessful marriages. And the thing I uh, got out of the analyzing those three examples and um, cross-analyzing and uh, of course analyzing their culture and how they click and why they click and, and everything what I know about the Southeastern uh, South, South Eastern Asian culture especially Khmer so I'm gonna be mixing a little bit Thailand little bit Cambodia and um, of course I was never married here and I was never in the relationship however oh boy oh boy oh boy did I talk about the topic with those who uh, been inside and uh, things which happened and now uh, many faces many farang white faces are coming through my head and the uh, stories they had to tell me so first things first this society you see here it's not new society it's thousands and thousands of years old and they have a certain structure a certain system which been working for thousands of years and oh boy it will be working for thousands of years because it is system which is successful so the Confucius essentially I think like 500 years before Christ roughly at the time of Buddha gathered the uh, customs the Chinese customs and codified them because he believed that society needs to have a, a structure in order to function so he didn't really discover these rules these rules been in the Sino society thousands of years prior to Confucius and in the uh, basic household system the structure goes like this you would normally have a wall with the pictures of uh, dead relatives and uh, maybe even their ashes and now you have on that place Buddha Rupa Buddha statue this is the holy part of the house uh, then in the hierarchy are the grandparents, uh, grandma and a grandpa. Then you have a mother and a father, then you have a children. And the roles are like this. The idea is that too much closeness between a husband and a wife is uh, actually bad for the system. So they should uh, stick to their rules. And uh, rules of the husband are of course to go out and uh, provide for the family. And rules of the wife are to provide for the grandparents his father and mother to take care of the children to take care of the house herself and then him and uh, in a system uh, he is not really uh, the most important uh, person the money in the in the modern uh, their way of understanding how it how system works goes like this if you marry for example Thai wife and your paycheck is 40,000 baht $1,000 10,000 baht or one quarter of it would normally go to her parents this is what I quote quote to quote this is my own language uh, renting the womb and uh, because this is how it goes it's a business deal you can make that business deal with her father if you like her you go to the father you talk to the father he's gonna tell you either two things one or two one will be one million and a half baht, two million baht, straightforward, and because nobody has that money, then it goes renting part, because in that society, in Thailand and here, people do not have pensions. Bingo. There is always why, right? So they need to rely on their children for survival. So what I cynically call renting the womb is his pension, because he produced it. Okay and it's working and it's natural then the next next thing in, in the importance uh, and some say first are the children and then it's her and then her siblings he also supposed to take care of the rest of the family because this is a different structure of the family you see family is all these people connected their family rightfully so because that's good while in western system you are isolated 
So you don't really give a shit about your family. Your money doesn't go there, and why would you? They have pensions and so on and so on. Well, here people need to help themselves, and there is a system in a place here for thousands of years, and it's working. And where it's not working, like in China, then you have uh, parents uh, in their 6, 70s and 80s uh, gathering bottles because a single child is somewhere already busy and needs money for children or maybe they don't even have a children like me. So, you know, bear in mind, it makes sense. Okay, so this is the uh, social system. And um, so now uh, the stories, the successful stories are the stories of the people who are poor. People who are poor, like uh, Dr. Richardson, uh, he's uh, you know living from his paycheck, and his uh, wife is uh, living off his paycheck. So, uh, I, when I when I explain the other examples, you will understand why I call it successful marriage. And they're functioning through the years as a family. She depends on his income. Okay. Uh, second is a dean and his wife. His dean is even dean is really poor. Uh, but they've been uh, traveling to England and even Israel and then back to Cambodia and they're managing together because uh, he's also proletarian. He has no property, nothing even in England, no apartment, absolutely nothing. And he's uh, living from however he is managing and she's also making some uh, jewelry and so on, cheap ones, and uh, they're getting by, as I understand the whole story. They have a little child and, and so on. And then the the bad examples are the examples of uh, Nando, Nando Ferdinando, Italian uh, uh, cardio uh, sur surgeon, uh, uh, doctor for the heart, specialist from Italy. He got um, madly in love in one girl when she was 18. He married her. They stayed all the way to the point when he paid off the house and when she opened the shop inside he was out that moment and the new guy walked in her old boyfriend something from a very long time and this was his story and this is not a unique story and, uh, and now i remember another italian guy telling me an interesting story about his wife his ex uh, uh, girlfriend in this case he told me one interesting thing she had a child because when she was 17 and when she was making love with her boyfriend she didn't even know that she can get pregnant because nobody told her so and suddenly she said mama i don't have period anymore mama asked her are you pregnant what's that and then she had a child and then he told me that's pretty normal with uh, you know uh, good girls in thailand they simply don't know that one leads to another another little digression about what is normal in your country and somewhere else where parents don't communicate and they don't have uh, anything in school uh, which is explaining them biology of course nothing then uh, these things happen you might laugh but happen so this was his story and then dean told me the third story so he was on the um, he, there was a party there was a, a wedding party and the guy was in his 60s in english and his Khmer wife was uh, in her 20s and she was already pregnant she was uh, six months pregnant and conveniently when everything was signed when they were legally married her brother pushed him by the accident through the stairs down the stairs if you i visualize that house is a 12 pillar house like mine in Taveng, they're all the same and he fell down he was immediately dead and then they adjusted his body so it could look like that he fell by himself but officially you know everybody know that his brother by accident pushed him or pushed him and then uh, his wife in front of everybody asked her family do you want me to abort now and he said i wanted to puke at that moment because uh, this was uh, in my understanding and his understanding uh, called uh, planned uh, murder and they, of course they got away with it because police officers have been right there. Here many people are police officers, they don't even go to the police station. And there is also this phenomenon of ghost police officers, ghost of soldiers, uh, all the way from the uh, pre-Khmer Rouge uh, era. They always had these people on the payroll which are not really on the 
forking anything, there's somebody simply collecting the paycheck. So it's a complicated system, who's police officer, who's really not, and who's active and so on. But uh, in short, uh, that was all fixed and he was very quickly cremated. So these also things happen and, um, and I heard another story uh, from a friend. This was a lady I met over the, over the YouTube. She was uh, told, telling the story of her, a very good friend from Australia, <coughs> who uh, is so rich that they even have like a house on a small island and uh, three, three, three children with his wife. She, he married her when she was young and she tried to kill him a couple of times. Once her brother tried to kill him, another time she tried to poison him and he survived and stayed with her. So, uh, general rule will be, uh, I, I suggest you to marry if you're like totally poor and she's like gaining nothing with murdering you. But uh, if uh, you have something to leave her, then uh, better not marry her because you might be dead bef <laughs> even before a wedding uh, is finished. And um, to, you know, to understand the, how they click, how they function is... Um, you need to ditch many things from your mind and observe things, uh, sorry for the term, but like a psychopath, like coldly, mathematically, calculatively. And uh, if you manage to do so, then you're going to understand the motives and actions and how they really click. Just ditch the romantic uh, fantasies out of your head, uh, ditch the expectations. Uh, try not to be horny uh, and try to observe the whole thing as it is and try to make some mechanisms in your life to protect yourself because the main mistake of the Western mind is we hopelessly think that the whole world is like us and that whole world must be like us but it's not you know? and then uh, when the world doesn't fit in Western mind, then Western mind really tries to fit it in. And I think I will finish with these words. I was uh, already at that time about one year in Thailand, my first year, and I was Pakao in the near, near to the Konken area. By the way, Khmer always uh, laugh when they hear the term Pakao because in Cambodia, Pakao is somebody who's like a dog asking other people for money and then gives that money to the monk while, you know, Luckily, uh, that was not the case in Thailand, otherwise I would never be a Bacal, you know. It's far more uh, dignifying system and far, far higher level of Buddhism than this one here, of course, as anything is. So he told me, you know, you need to stay at least one year in, in country to begin to start understanding how different they are. And we've been drinking coffee in a very nice uh, coffee shop and uh, he was teaching, of course, English there. and. And then I just got it immediately, like, I understand you, really. It's like, first two months I was totally lost. First two months I was uh, thinking that uh, I'm surrounded by people which are fundamentally like me. And he told me, more you stay here in this area, in this country, more you will understand that they are fundamentally different than we are. And uh, after one year, I finally allowed myself to you know, you really need to have some sort of ego release in order to allow yourself to understand that people around you are fundamentally, but fundamentally different in a very deep things, okay? And, and marriage and love is one of those things. So here, love is irrelevant, absolutely irrelevant factor. It's simply business deal. It was always business deal. You can make that business deal. And, you, and she can produce you babies, right? But, you know, don't expect from her to understand the Nietzsche and to understand the Kant and to understand the difference between uh, Christianity and Buddhism because she, pre before you, she probably not going to even know what's Christianity. And when she meets you, she will know that's a Farang Sangha, church from Farang country. This is the level you can expect, my friend. But fertility, you can get. So, this is, uh, these are my final words. It's okay if you're poor, if you're rich, it's dangerous. You can expect sex, you can expect from her to do her duties, which will be taking care of the house, taking care of you, uh, not only sexually. If you, if you want sex, her duty is to provide it immediately, okay? Uh, 
in this society absolutely the reason i have a headache that's her job it's a job uh, clean the house uh, prepare the meal take care of uh, uh, parents and uh, and your job is to bring that cash in the system because when you bring that cash in the system she can do her duty my friend and beyond that there is nothing that's already all otherwise you think like parang <laughs> well you guess what um this part this is gonna be the family <laughs> leave it that because they're gonna be always uh, you know going with the hands but again you're not married to a white woman right you could not afford that you now you deal what you have 